2020 is fast approaching us. We are less than a month away from entering a new decade of basketball. As we wave by to the 2010s, we got one last thing to do. Create an all-NBA 2010s decade team. We must recognize and put on a pedestal the greatest of the decade, those who made the 2010s great. There are some rules and stipulations for making this team. Rule 1. We are looking at the careers of these players from the 2009-2010 NBA season to the 2018-2019 NBA season, a 10-year span. Anything that's happened before or after this time period, we are oblivious to. Rule 2. This team will be 15 players deep, separated into a first team, second team, and third team. Rule 3. Each team will consist of two guards, two front court players, and one center. Together, they will be known as the All-NBA 2010 Decades Team. And guys, I know it's relatively obvious who will be on the first team, so I provided this timestamp so you guys can skip to the center position of the first team. So let's just jump into it. The first guard spot would be occupied by no one other than Steph Curry. He revolutionized the way the game was played in this decade. Every single NBA team studied his greatness and tried to emulate his playstyle on the basketball court. Steph Curry tore up this decade. He captured three NBA titles in the span of four years, led the Warriors to the greatest NBA regular season record of all time, 73-9, and, and became a two-time league MVP, with one being the first ever player to receive it unanimously. People in the GOAT conversation never did this. To add Sprinkle to the cake, he also joined the illustrious 50-40-90 club this decade, won a scoring title, and was selected to 6 All-Star teams and 6 All-NBA teams. He also became known universally as the greatest shooter of all time. The other guard spot would be occupied by James Harden. And can there really be any pushback from him occupying this spot? He's in a league of his own at this position and has shown that this decade he's simply an offensive wizard able to score and distribute so effortlessly. Listen to some of the historic numbers he put up in this 10 year span. He's the only player in NBA history to have a 60 point triple double, the only player to score 50 points, 15 assists and 15 rebounds in a game the only player to score 2,000 plus points, 900 plus assists, and 600 plus rebounds in a season. This is just the tip of the iceberg. He also holds the record for the second longest 30 point game streak in NBA history and has averaged 36.1 points for an entire season. Harden has been an offensive juggernaut. This decade, he's won two scoring titles, one assist title, one six man of the year, and one MVP. He's also been selected as 7 All-Star Games and 6 All-NBA teams. The first front court slot would be occupied by LeBron James. He has been the pinnacle of excellence this decade. I can go on for 5 straight hours talking about everything he has done in this 10 year span. But there's no point. You guys all know he deserves his spot. He went to 8 straight finals, won 3 rings, won 3 MVPs, won 3 finals MVPs, became the first player in NBA history to knock out a 70 plus win team, was selected to 10 all-star games, 10 all-NBA teams, 5 defensive team, and ultimately lodged himself into the GOAT conversation. So let's just move on. The other front court spot would be occupied by Kevin Durant. Like LeBron James, I expect no pushback on why he's even here, even if you're a Golden State hater. He has had such a tremendous decade that he's propelled himself into the conversation of the greatest scorers of all time. He took hold almost half the scoring titles this decade and on top of that won two championship rings, two finals MVPs and one league MVP. There's a lot more we can say about him 
But let's just move on to the next one, because there's no other player in this decade that has a shred of an argument to replace him. This is where it gets hard, selecting a center for the all-decade team. Let's be honest, centers in this decade have been historically weak. With the way the league changed, the individuals who played the center position had to go through a tough and necessary change. This ultimately diluted the pool of great centers, and that is why the best center of the 2010s is Dwight Howard, a center that was only good for half the decade and spent the other half being cheered when he left the team. Nonetheless, we cannot ignore his dominance and greatness the first half of the decade. He spent the first three of it in Orlando, and he was one of the best players in the league. He was a defensive juggernaut and a freakish athlete. He finished these seasons in the MVP voting 4th, 2nd, and 7th. Then he went to the Lakers, followed by Houston, where he regressed a ton. But he was still a top center in the league. In this span, he was selected to 5 All-NBA teams, 3 NBA All-Defensive teams, 5 All-Star teams, and won 2 Defensive Player of the Year awards. No other center can match what he did this decade when encompassing stats, accolades, and playoff success. Choosing the guards for the second team guard spot is a hard choice. The 2010s was the decade of the guards. Many rose to prominence, so there are a lot of formidable options to take up the spot. But the two players that outshined the competition was Chris Paul and Russell Westbrook. Let's start with Chris Paul. He is one of the last great old school point guards that remain in the league today. A passing savant with a ridiculous dribbling ability and relentless defense. We all know this decade hasn't been kind to him. He hasn't won a ring, has had trouble staying healthy, and has had numerous people question his leadership. Despite all that, he has racked up quite an impressive resume. He has been selected to 7 All-Star teams, 6 All-NBA teams, 7 NBA All-Defensive teams, has won the All-Star Game MVP and has led the league in assists twice and steals 4 times. When looking at this decade alone of CP3's career, you can arguably say he's a top 10 point guard of all time. Now with Russell Westbrook. A unique case, Westbrook was able to thrive this decade despite lacking glaring skill sets that made guards successful. He compensated by playing the entire decade at 100 miles per hour with maximum effort every game. His drive, hard work, and athleticism gave him success in every facet of the game. When looking just at his per game stats, you would say he's one of the greatest of all time. Obviously this isn't the case, but listen to some of his insane statistical accomplishments. He became the first player to average a triple double since Oscar Robertson. He became the first player to average a triple double for multiple seasons and recorded the most triple doubles in a season. He has a handful of statistical record, but let's look at his accolades. This decade, He's been selected to 8 All-Star teams, 8 All-NBA teams, has won 2 scoring titles, 2 assist titles, 2 All-Star Game MVPs, and 1 League MVP. Westbrook's sheer will and intensity lodged him onto the second team. Now let's move on to the front court. The front court slots of the second team would be occupied by Kawhi Leonard and Blake Griffin. Kawhi Leonard used each year of the decade as a stepping stone towards greatness. His first half of the decade was an intense development phase, while the second half was reaping the rewards of his hard work. He became a superstar that had no weak points in his game and also became the best two-way player of the decade, capable of locking up the best player on the opposing team while going for 30. He has been a big time player this decade that always turns up a notch during playoff time. 
We've seen this in his historic playoff run with the Raptors last season, but also previous seasons such as the 2014 NBA Finals when he guarded LeBron or his 2016 playoff run where he put the Spurs up 27 points against the Warriors before falling victim to an injury. All of Kawhi's accolades only come from 2014 onwards and he's still on the second team. Look at what he has done. He has been selected to 3 All-Star teams, 3 All-NBA teams, 5 NBA All-Defensive teams and has won 2 Defensive Player of the Year awards, 2 NBA Championships and 2 Finals MVPs. Now let's talk about Blake Griffin. His game at the beginning of the decade was heavily reliant on his freakish athleticism. But as his body began to fail with numerous different injuries, he developed into an all-around point forward. He was able to handle the ball, pass the ball, shoot the three and slash. We tend to forget how great he was because the Clippers always crashed and burned out of the playoffs. But give credit where credit's due. He always got them to the playoffs with stellar regular season campaigns. We forget. In the 2013-2014 season, Blake Griffin finished third in MVP voting and finished within the top 10 numerous times within the decade. This includes his rookie year where he became the only rookie of the decade to partake in the All-Star game. He finished the decade with 6 All-Star appearances and 5 All-NBA team honors. Now the center position. The center position is the most difficult position to choose for the all decade team. Some centers just haven't played much of the decade while others have been just disappointing. There's one center though that has played consistently throughout the decade at a high level and is often overlooked and that is Marc Gasol. We don't hear much about him due to the fact he spent most of the decade playing with the Memphis Grizzlies. But here's a quick recap. Playoff wise, he gave us some of the most entertaining series of the decade, knocking out a 61 win San Antonio Spurs team as an 8 seed and knocking out a 60 win OKC team. Then as a role player, he helped destroy the Warriors dynasty. Gasol has quietly racked up quite an impressive resume, making 3 all-star teams, 2 all-NBA teams, 1 NBA all-defensive team and winning defensive player of the year award and a ring. Now the third team. Let's start off with the guards. The guards are a tough choice, so many stellar guards this decade, but the two that stand out a little above the rest while taking into consider playoff success, accolades and stats is Dwayne Wade and Klay Thompson. Wade has just retired this previous season. Many remember him as a good solid player that used to be a superstar long ago. That was this decade. Wade dominated the first half of the decade. He averaged 25 plus points the first two years of the decade and helped his team go to 4 straight NBA Finals and capture back to back rings. He was an elite scorer who had a variety of signature moves, the turnaround jump shot, the double pivot, the freeze fake and many more. He was a great scorer, could operate around the block, play above the rim and was lights out from the mid range. That tapered off slowly as the decade progressed but Wade still racked up quite an impressive resume. He's made 8 all star teams, 4 all NBA teams and 1 NBA all defensive team. Klay Thompson Klay Thompson on the other hand dominated the later part of the decade. He became one of the greatest shooters of all time and has become one of the most feared players when he gets going. Let's not forget his 37 points in a quarter or 14 threes in a game which is a league record by the way or 60 points with 11 dribbles. Shooting wasn't the only thing he was known for as opponents feared his smothering defense. It's a travesty he's only made one NBA all defensive team this decade but it is what it is. He's always the Warriors go to guy to defend the hardest matchup on the opposing team. He's done it with great success. Thompson has also made 5 all star teams and 2 all NBA teams. But the most important thing he has done this decade 
was his contributions to the Warriors dynasty. He helped them destroy a bunch of team records and capture three rings in four years. The first forward would be Anthony Davis. He was a force to be reckoned with, able to dominate the offensive end and defensive end. He became one of the best two-way players in the league and statistically was up there with the greats. He also made a nice resume of accolades, making six all-star games, three all-NBA teams, three NBA all-defensive teams. Why he's on the third team and not the first or second is because his playoff resume has been more than underwhelming. He has missed the playoffs most of this decade or barely scraped in just to be swept. The other forward would be Paul George. Paul George became a prominent player of the league back in his Indiana Pacers day. George took the Pacers to back-to-back -to -back conference finals and pushed the star-studded heat to the limits both times. After he had that devastating compound fracture, many thought he wouldn't be as good again. But it was his team that faltered, not him. His game was still silky smooth on the offensive end and defensive end. He was able to elevate his game to a superstar level after he forced his way out of Indiana. What showed for it was he finished third in MVP voting, the highest ever in his career. This decade, he's won a Most Improved Player of the Year award, has been selected to six All-Star games, five All-NBA teams, and four NBA All-Defensive teams. He has wholeheartedly deserved this spot on the All-Decades roster. For our center, we have Al Horford. People are going to disagree with me on this one and say no, DeMarcus Cousins belongs. But just hear me out. Al is not a base stats guy. Let's get that clear. He's an advanced stats guy. The advanced stats love him. We're talking offensive ratings, defensive ratings, value over replacement player, and efficiency. He does just about everything right. And more importantly, he does stuff that contributes to winning. And that is exactly why every team he goes to has a surge in wins. He's helped the Celtics and Hawks go on numerous deep playoff runs before being thwarted away by LeBron. But that's besides the point. LeBron rules the East. Al Horford is a fundamentally sound player that does everything. He won't be showing up on ESPN unless he's done this. Because he's not a flashy player. But he's a player every NBA team should want. This decade, he's been named an All-Star five times, an All-NBA team player once, and an NBA All-Defensive team player once. That concludes the All-NBA 2010s decade team. Here are some players that deserve an honorable mention as they were close to making the All-Decade roster. Kyrie Irving, Kobe Bryant, Damian Lillard, Dirk Nowitzki, LaMarcus Aldridge, Giannis Antetokounmpo, and Carmelo Anthony. This concludes our video. But wait, there's more. Comment below who you think I left off the roster or shouldn't be on the roster. And guys, don't forget to subscribe and turn post notifications on so I can get my views up. This is Earn Your Ranks, where we only talk about ball. Signing off.